Welcome to J4S English, I'm Jennifer, and today we're going to read a news article from the New York Times, so you can add a lot of advanced vocabulary, advanced grammar, and correct pronunciation to your speech. Let's get started. As you may know, King Charles has been officially crowned. So this article is discussing what kind of king will Charles be? So let's find out. Our first paragraph. Charles, the longest serving heir to the throne in British history. Notice here the pronunciation H is silent, heir. And this is pronounced exactly as what you breathe, heir, heir. And an heir, of course, is someone who will legally receive money, property, or in this case, a title from another person. So in terms of royalty, heir is very relevant, but you and I, we could be the heir to our family's money or our family's business, for example. Let's continue on. His apprenticeship as heir lasting 70 years. So this is how long he has been waiting to receive the title. 70 years has made him the best prepared and oldest new monarch ever to take the throne. Now notice this, the oldest new monarch, because he is a new monarch. He was only crowned as king a few days ago, but he's the oldest because he's been waiting 70 years. So he's been waiting for that title. The 74 year old king was there throughout his mother's long reign. One's reign refers to the amount of time that either a king or queen rules a country. So, of course, as we know, Queen Elizabeth, who is now deceased, her reign was very long. And notice my pronunciation. The pronunciation sounds exactly like reign, reign, reign. Witnessing generations of world leaders come and go because he was waiting to be king for 70 years, including 15 UK prime ministers and 14 US presidents. I summarized all of these notes and they're available as a free lesson PDF. So you can look for the link in the description below. And I also have this free speaking guide that shares six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. So you can look for the description to download this in the description below. After Queen Elizabeth II's remarkable era defining reign, what kind of king might we expect? And how will a prince used to speaking out on issues adapt to the neutrality of a monarch? Let's take a look here. Used to. First of all, notice the pronunciation because this D, you don't hear it. Use. Used to. Now, I'm going to pronounce both of these together because the preposition to belongs to used to. Used to. Used to. To. So you'll hold out that S sound, use to, and then you will pronounce the T of to, use to. And notice what do we have here? Our gerin, our gerin. The expression is to be used to, and then you have, if you have a verb, it will be a gerin verb. You could also have a noun. Let me show you an example. We could say King Charles is used to luxury. This will be a noun. Or as a gerund, how could I turn this into a sentence with a gerund? Well, I could say King Charles is used to living a luxurious life because I need to take my noun luxury and turn it into an adjective, luxurious, luxurious. Notice that pronunciation here, luxury, luxurious. King Charles is used to living. 
Okay, I have my gerund and this is my verb to be. So if I changed it, let's say they referring to the royal family, they are used to living a luxurious life because I have to conjugate my verb to be. So I'll change this. Well, I'll leave it here for you to see that. Now, when you're used to something, it simply means you have a feeling of comfort with something because it's been part of your life or your daily routine for so long. Charles has always lived a luxurious life. He was born into a luxurious life, so he doesn't know any other way of living. So we can say he's used to it. As a Canadian, I can say I'm used to the cold because I have lived in a cold climate my entire life. But I could say I'm not used to extreme heat. So when I travel to tropical destinations, it can be difficult for me because I'm used to the cold. I'm not used to extreme heat. So how will a prince used to speaking out? Now, what does this mean? When you speak out, it means you share your opinion freely, even if it's not a popular opinion. So to speak out, to share one's opinion freely on issues. So they're saying Prince Charles, when he was prince, he frequently shared his opinion publicly. But as king, you can't do that because a monarch, the king or queen, and in this case, king, a monarch is supposed to be neutral. When you're neutral, you don't take a side. You stay in the middle. You don't have your own opinion. So they're saying he always shared his opinion as prince, but now as king, he needs to get used to being neutral. Okay, let's continue. King Charles is well aware of the need to be less outspoken. So someone who is outspoken is someone who frequently speaks out. They frequently share their opinion and they share it freely, but he needs to be less outspoken. Another way of saying that perhaps would be he needs to be more reserved or simply more neutral. You could say that as well to use the same adjective they used here, neutrality. The country that King Charles will reign over, another way of saying rule, will reign over is much more diverse than that inherited by his mother. Now, when you inherit something, it's because you were the heir. So he inherited the throne because he was the heir to the throne. And remember that pronunciation and spelling to heir in this context is very different. More diverse than that inherited by his mother. And Professor Bogdaner anticipates that the new king will reach out to a multicultural, multi-faith Britain. When you reach out to someone, or in this case, a group of people, it means you, you purposely contact, but in this case, it would be more connect with. So to purposely connect with someone, or in this case, it's a group. He expects him to try to act as a unifying force. So here, if we have different cultures, different faith, he's going to try to unify them, which means to bring them together as one single unit, making more visible efforts to connect with ethnic minorities and disadvantaged groups. So instead of connect with, you could also say reach out, reach out. But if you do use reach out, you have to include the preposition to before 
before you identify the someone or the group. So you connect with, the preposition here is with, but you reach out to. So just remember that because there is a different preposition. Reach out to ethnic minorities and disadvantaged groups. Are you enjoying this lesson and this way of learning? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers on TV, movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills, learn advanced vocabulary, learn complex grammar, improve your pronunciation, all in a very fun and engaging way. And you'll have me as your personal coach. So if you'd like to learn more, you can look in the description for the link on how to become a member. Now let's continue. There has been much talk about the king preferring a slim down monarchy. When you slim a company or organization down, a monarchy can be considered an organization. It consists of individuals who have specific jobs and responsibilities in order to produce a desired outcome, just like a company does. So in this case, slim down simply means to reduce the size. And in this case, it could be the number of people in the monarchy. So let me share the definition here of slim down. So reduce the number of people who work in a company or organization. Often, often, let me move this over so that... It operates more effectively. As an example, we could say Amazon has been slimming down. And you could say Amazon has been slimming down its U.S. companies. Now notice I have this in the present perfect continuous has been slimming down because the action started in the past, but it continues until now. And if I say they're slimming down, it means that they're reducing the number of employees because they want to operate more effectively. And it seems like that is maybe what Charles will do as king. It's likely to mean a greater emphasis on a smaller core group of working royals, which Charles and Camilla, so King Charles, Queen Camilla, Prince William, his son, of course, and Catherine, usually known as Kate, <laughs> William's wife, Kate, at its center. So a smaller number. They're going to slim down the monarchy. Despite this, the overriding message of the new reign, remember this pronunciation, reign, will be continuity and stability. Notice the pronunciation here, continuity, continuity, because you're probably very familiar with the pronunciation of the word continue, right? continue. And it looks just like this, but it's not continuity, continue. And then you add a T continuity. No continuity, continuity, continuity is a noun. And it simply means that something continues for a long time. And there isn't a lot of change or nothing is being stopped. So you might say, as an example, you could use this more in a negative. Our country lacks continuity. So it means that there is a lot of change within your leaders or within your system or within how things operate, which can create a lot of chaos, right? So our country lacks continuity, or you could just be very specific and say our government or one area of your government as well. Our government lacks continuity. And if you don't have continuity, then most likely you also won't have stability, says royal commentator Victoria Murphy. 
Charles has become a relaxed and approachable figure. So approachable as an adjective means that it's easy to approach. So it's easy to go up to Charles and just have a conversation or share your opinion with him, share your concerns with him. So that is approachable, approachable figure. I'll just highlight this and I'll make a note. Just easy to approach, easy to approach when he's meeting the public. And this is a very good thing because imagine that you went to go meet one of the leaders of your country and they seemed like they didn't want to talk to you. They didn't want to hear about your concerns. You That wouldn't make you feel very good, right? So it's a nice thing that he is considered approachable. Getting his audience on side when you get someone on side, it means that you get them to like you, to support you, I guess would be a better way. The politician needs to get people on side. So to get people to support that politician on side. With a few self-deprecating jokes. Self-deprecating means that you make fun of yourself, but in a lighthearted, entertaining way. And it's a way that you can be considered more approachable. So he might make fun of, I don't know, maybe his hair or his nose or the fact that he has always lived in luxury, but he, he makes some jokes in a way that just gets people to not feel so tense around him in a way to make him seem more approachable. Perhaps that will change as monarch, but as Prince of Wales, he developed an affable grandfatherly style with no standoffishness. So if there is any sense of standoffishness, it would mean that he doesn't try to actively engage with the public. When he's in public, maybe there's all these bodyguards around him and he just like, he doesn't even make eye contact. He doesn't go out and wave and shake people's hands. That would be standoffishness. But they're saying there's no standoffishness. Now, these are adjectives you could use to describe your boss. If your boss isn't very approachable, it means you don't feel comfortable sharing concerns with your boss. Or if your boss is very standoffish, then it means that he doesn't actively engage with the people in his company. He doesn't try to say, oh, hi, how are you doing? What's your name? How are you liking it here? Things like that. He wouldn't do that. And affable, this is a great adjective. I like this one, pronunciation, affable, affable. So affable, this is someone is, who is just friendly, easy to talk to, easy to interact with. So it's a very positive adjective. I hope you think I'm affable. <laughs> Do you think I'm affable? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> and hopefully there's no standoffishness either. I hope that's the sense you get from me as well. For a man in his 70s, the king shows no sign of slowing down. So that's a little insight to how Charles will be as king now that he is officially king. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the start of this article and I will read it start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. What kind of king will Charles be? Charles, the longest serving heir to the throne in British history, is now king. His apprenticeship as heir, lasting 70 years, has made him the best prepared and oldest new monarch ever to take to the throne. The 74-year-old king was there throughout his mother's long reign, witnessing generations of world leaders come and go including 15 UK prime ministers and 14 US presidents. 
After Queen Elizabeth II's remarkable era-defining reign, what kind of king might we expect? And how will a prince used to speaking out on issues adapt to the neutrality of a monarch? King Charles is well aware of the need to be less outspoken. The country that King Charles will reign over is much more diverse than that inherited by his mother. And Professor Bogdaner anticipates that the new king will reach out to a multicultural, multi-faith Britain. He expects him to try to act as a unifying force, making more visible efforts to connect with ethnic minorities and disadvantaged groups. There has been much talk about the king preferring a slimmed-down monarchy is likely to mean a greater emphasis on a smaller core group of working royals, with Charles and Camilla, Prince William and Catherine at its center. Despite this, the overriding message of the new reign will be continuity and stability, says royal commentator Victoria Murphy. Charles has become a relaxed and approachable figure when he's meeting the public, getting his audience on side with a few self-deprecating jokes. Perhaps that will change as monarch, but as Prince of Wales, he developed an affable, grandfatherly style with no standoffishness. For a man in his 70s, the king shows no signs of slowing down. I have more articles on the royal coronation, so make sure you subscribe to get all of those articles. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can download it from my website right here. And why don't you get started with your next lesson right now?